Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. So leopards becoming humans, having sex. Awesome. Deadly Premonition 2. Is this a survival horror game? Like your Resident Evil? Or your Silent Hill? Mm, I would say no, so please stick around to see what this game is all about. Before I played this game, I thought it was a combination of survival horror and open world sandbox-ish kind of game. Mm, but it is not. Instead, it only copies some of those elements and keep it very lightweight. And if you're not a hardcore survival horror fan, this game could just be something for you. Coming from someone who has played the first title in the series, what I like about this game is the good story, the excellent voice acting, and the one guy in the middle of all that. Story the game starts by you having a vacation and just enjoying a good morning breakfast that was almost immediately interrupted by the news of a recent murder case in town. So what was meant to be a holiday now becomes a new job for you and you just love to solve those mystery cases. And sensing that this is going to be a bizarre one, let's just go crack this case. Time to introduce you to you. By the way, what's your name? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Um, is something wrong with you? Ah, Francis York Morgan. The same character as the one in the first game. He is actually two people in one. Let me try to explain. Every time he reaches for his head like this, he is talking to his good friend Zack. Now this happens often, and I gotta say, for new timers, this takes some time to get used to. Because this weirdness was actually one of the things that almost put me off in the first game. When you get control of York, you meet Melvin, the town sheriff, and he is surprised that an FBI agent dropped by his small town when a big murder case just happened. And being the FBI agent that you are, you eventually meet up with many of these very unique characters and uncover the story behind. Gameplay The game is split into two parts, and what you're seeing here is an event in the year of 2019 and you are in York's apartment, but you play as a different character. You are FBI agent Aaliyah Davis. Don't expect any action during this chapter of the game. It is where you'll be stuck in an apartment and have long conversations with the present York alongside with another male FBI detective. When you get control of Aliyah, you can look around the room for all these different points of interest that you can interact with. And you can either look at them or you can inspect them. Now hitting inspect will carry on the game. Now, not every point of interest that you inspect will allow you to progress in the game. But what the hell, I would say go for every point you see on screen, just to enjoy the very interesting conversations these three chaps have. Once you hit all the points required to finish up the first part of the episode, you are then allowed to return to the year 2005. You control York in third person view. You have two main bars always visible to you on the top left, which are your health and also your stamina. Um, stamina is needed when you sprint. Uh, moving around, the controls are very fluid, and knowing where to go is easy because you could always see this red sign. Okay, I'll play by your rules. Getting things done in this game is fairly simple. You get quests and it tells you where to go and when to do it. And if you still favor some side quests, one way is to pop by the local sheriff station. And once you get inside, there is a notice board which you can walk up to. And there you go, side quests. I tried a few, but none of them adds to the main story. Look at here, 
I'm actually on a quest to kill a bunch of squirrels and if you're not careful these small buggers will be able to steal from you I just love this little girl who follows you around almost everywhere in the game she's like your partner in crime by the way Patty what do you usually do when you're at home should an adult male like you really be asking a little girl this kind of question Next up is a quick look at your inventory. It's just a basic list of items that you bought or picked up. And unlike a survival horror game, you can carry up to 30 items. But occasionally you still run out of space and uh, there's this toolbox you see here that is scattered around the game. So inside is what you expect, a place where you can swap in and swap out items and keeping the items that you need. One of the annoying things in this game is the element of time. Let's take a closer look at this objective. See that it says time 2230 to 600. That means you can only do that mission in those times. And to move time in the quickest way possible is to go to sleep. The shortest time you can sleep is 1 hour and the longest is 24 hours. I know right? So set the hours you need and go to sleep. And what happens when you wake up? You get hungry, of course. Not only that, your stamina drops way down. And the only way to recover that is to get some food. For a hotel, there is only three dishes. Hmm. So pick the one you like and pay for it and you're set. One of the things you might have noticed is the eye symbol on the top left corner. That's something you can trigger when you need to. Let me show you how it works. See how empty this room is? It basically allows you to uncover all the hidden items in the room. Puzzle solving in this game is what I think can be done better. Here is one example where you have to choose the right location. And it's easy because you can just pick every single one until you get the correct location. Pretty much all the puzzles are like that. So once you have chosen the correct one, the puzzle ends and then you just move on. Combat. This is it, Zack. A deadly premonition. Okay, it's finally time for some real action. I was excited at first, but when you learn that in the whole game, you only get one gun. Yeah, just one gun. The one you're seeing here is the only one you shoot in the whole game. Controls here are very basic. The left stick moves the character, the right stick moves the cursor. Very reminiscent of games like RE4. Moving along these hallways, you will encounter enemies. Get too close and they will try to chop you up. So just shoot them in the face. The shooting mechanics here are very simple. So don't expect that you can shoot the enemy's legs and topple it. With just more shots, you will just kill it. The one thing you can do is to land a headshot. Earns you some money as well. There is one nice thing you can do with your gun. It's where you can hold down the trigger button and it would unleash rays to diminish your enemies. Especially useful when you have a lot of them in front of you. In the midst of combat, you will run into an area where there are no fighting at all. These are areas I like to call story areas, with some very light investigation and evidence collecting. With your special ability to sense the nightmarish world, I guess it's not a surprise you can see a snapshot of what actually happened. And like any other game, you will come to a boss at the end of the chapter. I'll let you find out how the boss fight turns out. You know, don't want to give any spoilers. Alrighty, let's do a wrap up. My biggest expectation for this game is not high. I merely wanted something that would improve over the first game. And I honestly think it did. I would rate the story as the highest. The rest is pretty much average. Hence, this is a game for those of you who really enjoys a good yet weird story and can still live with all the many shortcomings. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.